What's happened with the truckers is similar to what happened when Trump got elected in 2016, and I'll tell you why. Because nobody thought that he had as much support as he did because of the bias and willful ignorance of the legacy media. You're never going to be president of the United States. Exhibit A. You're going to be saying it's 20 or 30 people. How many people are here? Okay. Thousands. Quick video here to CBC. Camera, they're setting up to point in this direction. Remember that. Now let's turn around and show what's really happening here. They were called the silent majority, and they surfaced not because they agreed with Trump, but because they were tired of getting shafted by this deeply flawed system. People are tired of politicians lying through their teeth, mainstream media lying through their teeth. Seems like CNN's a little mad that people find podcasters more trustworthy than them. But I'm not here to defend Rogan, there's plenty of people already doing that. What I'm here for is to challenge your trust in the media. And then there's this news outlet that claims that the demonstration has turned into a big tent rally of Canada's fast growing far right. Uh, now he's going, now he's gone. We called him out. He knows. Meanwhile, Trudeau's trying to make it seem like this guy represents the protests. Fuck off. Conservative party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. Where's all the shit in the streets? Where's all the video of residents being harassed? My business has not been interrupted. Every single person we have met, met us with so much love. It's the same as the anti-police protests. The people who said all cops need to die are the exception, not the rule. In the interest of truth and fairness, I tried looking for evidence that painted the protesters in a bad light, and believe me, I looked. This first one is really bad. As a mother, your first priority should always be the safety of your child. It's irresponsible and immoral to gamble with your child's safety, and that's that. This second clip is the alleged assault of an Ottawa citizen. The alleged victim claims the police did nothing, and that could be a failure of justice. Or maybe it's just an event that didn't warrant any sort of legal action. And that's for you to decide, but in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this doesn't exactly sound like the voice of someone who's experiencing assault. In fact, he sounds a lot like the Karen who cried manager. And that's it. Out of the multiple hundreds of clips that I've seen, these two were the only bad ones I could find. So assuming that last guy wasn't lying, the only other footage I could find of violence was directed at the protesters by the police. But more on that later in the video, as well as why the emergency measures weren't justified and why Justin Trudeau should probably be tried for treason. First, I want to address some criticisms I've heard. What about the quote unquote desecration of the war memorial? Many people in trucking are either veterans themselves or come from a veteran family. Cleaned it up better than the city has ever done. They assigned a team that would rotate shifts 24 seven to ensure wow. nobody would be desecrating the war memorial or the tomb of the unknown soldier. One of the points I've heard is that it's silly and pointless because they're protesting mandates that were already planned to be removed, which is simply not true. Provinces didn't make any announcement or have any plans and schedule to remove mandates until after pressure began in Ottawa. This is no longer a protest. With a protest, you peacefully make your point and you go back home. Mm, you'd like that, wouldn't you, Dougie? It's a great way to get nothing done, and maybe that wouldn't be true if politicians didn't blatantly ignore and antagonize the people that disagree with them. Three days later. Effective March the 1st. We will lift proof of vaccination requirement for all settings. Today's announcement is not because of what's happening in Ottawa. Doubt. And to this day, Trudeau still hasn't expressed any intention of revoking the border mandate. Serious question, what do you think is more likely? That politicians, as trustworthy as they are, were already planning to give up their surplus of power secretly behind closed doors? Or do you think that they caved after the people lit a fire under their ass? And of course they won't admit it, because God forbid the people realize that they have the power to make change. Now the second criticism is that they need proof of vaccination to get into the US anyway, which is a mandate that was actually stated a week after our own mandate. So it's pretty clear that this was a collaboration between the two governments, and if one fails, it's likely that the other will soon follow. And to say that the US did it too doesn't excuse anything, and it doesn't make it acceptable on our side of the fence. I'm gonna say it now, but I don't agree with the blockades at the borders to try to cut off supply chains, but at the same time, I understand it. The government is unjustly imposing more mandates, and instead of listening to protesters and peers alike, as leaders should, he antagonizes them and turns people against them. Plasticus. So what else are you supposed to do other than escalate? Give up? No. 
But I don't think the blockades were the answer, and all it really did was give them an excuse to further antagonize the movement. I was just watching a live stream of the Freedom Convoy. I was reading through some of the comments, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. People were mocking the truckers for fighting for freedom, spelled F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B. You and I, we understand that freedom is invaluable. Good men and women all throughout history have laid down their lives in pursuit and defense of freedom. They don't share that understanding. They think that freedom is dumb. They literally laugh at the idea that people should be free enough to decide what medical treatment they want to pursue. And listen, are people going to make stupid decisions as a result of their freedom? Of course they are, but that's the beauty of freedom. You get to make your own stupid decisions. The government doesn't make those stupid decisions for you. And listen, if you think that you're the good guy or that you're very smart and you're the one making fun of people who simply want to have medical freedom, you're not half as smart as you think you are and you are certainly not the good guy. There are members of this conservative caucus, the descendants of victims of the Holocaust. Apologize for this shameful remark. Mr. Speaker, these illegal... One more chance. Apologize. Even as the members of the conservative... I have given him two chances. Apologize. These illegal blockades... <laughs> there are three sides to every story. Their side, the other side, and the truth. I'll let you decide. I was here the first day of Ground Zero. I actually saw the guy with a swastika flag. So it was a real thing. It was it. a real thing. This is what they didn't tell you. He was going around with the flag saying, is this what you want for our country? Really? This is what Trudeau is going to turn our flag into if we allow this draconian fascism to continue. You know what else people are tired of? They're tired of the science flip-flopping every other month. Fully vaccinated, no longer wear a mask. People should not be walking around with masks. And masks are protective. Attacks on me are attacks on science. Things that I have spoken about consistently from the very beginning. Natural immunity does it protect you as well. We see that these people do know better. So if someone's had the natural infection and then they're subsequently vaccinated, it really doesn't improve their level of protection. It's actually from the Centers for Disease Control. We're still in a pandemic of the unvaccinated. They're tired of rules that straight up don't make sense, and I know you know how many rules straight up don't make sense. And yet, these politicians claim to be following the science. The government has been overstepping. You saw something on my Facebook? Facebook group. <clears throat> okay, and decided to come to my personal resident to give me information about peaceful protest? Yes. But now they've gone too far. Suddenly requiring shots for isolated truck drivers does not make sense, especially in a time where the pandemic is approaching its natural end. And why? Because they crossed an imaginary line? This is nonsense. We tried it their way. We really did. Do you see the smiles in the kids? Do you know what has been taken away from them these last two years? Told me they wanted to cut themselves and kill themselves? Kids want to die because of the last two years. Now you think kids should be taken from their parents out of these trucks? You're repeating it and people are believing it. Why do you think there's people out here counter protesting? You think Winnipeg, someone drove down four protesters purposely. Do you know how divisive this is? Yeah. Is this, this is not the world I want my kids to live in and you guys are a big part of what you're doing. They have never been happier. This, 10 days than they have in the last two years and notes that are stuck to every single truck yeah, from kids. Absolutely. You see the heart that comes out from them. Yeah. Do you know how important this is for them? Do Why don't you guys report like, it? Like I said, Why don't not, you report the truth? Not my, it's not in my power now. It ruined our livelihoods. It ruined our children's development. It ruined college for people. There's an entire generation of teens in their formative years who didn't get to experience high school. It robbed couples of their dream weddings. It robbed friends and families of their loved ones' funerals. It robbed communities of their churches. It robbed people of their celebrations, their graduations. It robbed our bodily autonomy, our economic autonomy, our freedoms. The rational thinkers have said this since the first months of the pandemic. And that's protect the vulnerable and let society go on because that's the most reasonable course of action. This isn't new information. We've known this, but the media and the corrupt politicians will not have it. They've ignored the pleas and the warnings of the rational thinkers. There will be no admittance of any wrongdoing on their end. People have so easily forgotten what it means to live in a democracy. A democracy means that the people control the government, not the other way around. As a generation of people, we've been made weak, docile, and dependent. Dependent on technology, dependent on pills, dependent on corporations, and dependent on government. We have forgotten what's important and what matters. We've been programmed to blend in, to stay silent, and not stand up for the things that we believe in deep down to our core.
Sorry, microphone. We've been made to believe that our neighbor is our enemy, rather than the tyrannical elites that would have our rights and freedom stripped from us in the name of money and power. Do you see? This is why the freedom protests are necessary. If we want to maintain the freedom and the principles that this beautiful country was founded and built upon, then we must fight back when they step out of line. It is our duty to fight back. <laughs> duty. We grew up in this beautiful nation, and we reaped the fruits of the freedom that our countrymen fought and died to protect. And it is our responsibility to make sure that future generations can do the same. The government and media is now claiming that the truckers are terrorists and criminals. And the thing that is unbelievable to me is that the government has declared the Canadian equivalent of martial law on what is the epitome of a peaceful protest. <laughs> The number one justification is that what these people are doing is illegal. And of course by illegal they mean parking illegally and being noisy. Oh my god, these people are barbarians. Look at history. When has a revolution ever been legal? Yeah, we believe in following the law, but I'm asking you about the law? And false science. Why? This is real Canada. This is real Canadians. They're fighting for us. For you, for me, for him, for everybody. For freedom. Illegal activity is such a silly label to use in this situation. Put it into perspective for a second. This is one of the most peaceful and unifying revolutions that I have ever heard of. So calling this illegal action is just empty rhetoric designed to make people think that the nature of the government's retaliation is justified. <laughs> and let me tell you, <laughs> it's not. We have officers who are on scene 24-7. I've personally spoken to many of those officers who have said consistently the same message, that this is one of the most reasonable and most welcoming group of protesters they've ever encountered. That is from uh, frontline uniform officers up into including senior officers who have been in negotiations with the leaders. Trudeau fronted like he was only going to use the emergency act to get rid of the highway blockades. But that's not what happened. They completely drove out the protesters from Ottawa too. Are you guys going to advance on us more? Or do you just not want us to come past here? Can you tell us? Like, what do you want us to do? Can we peacefully protest here? Or are we in danger? Like, I'm sure you don't want us to be injured. We just want to know. One more booster. You must leave. You will be arrested. Leave north on Sussex. We love you. We love you. We love you. What the hell is that? It's Canada, people. Canada and our allies will defend democracy. We are taking these actions today to stand against authoritarianism. If you go to the Government of Canada information page of the Emergency Act, you'll see that they've edited to specifically say this will allow law enforcement to clear blockades, etc., etc. They've edited the information page to make it seem like this legislation was made for situations like this. But if you go to this legislation, you can read it yourself. It's publicly available on the same website. It says it's for, for wartime things like terrorism and, and 
public security. Okay, so we can weed out international and war emergency. It's not public welfare because that's for acts of God. And I guess if like a nuclear reactor blows up, so it's got to be public order, which is specifically for threats to the security of Canada. Look at the bottom. It says does not include lawful protest. But that doesn't mean you can unleash this on any unlawful protest. Look at everything else. Espionage, foreign influence, use of serious violence, covert acts leading to the destruction of the constitutionally established system by violence. This is clearly describing terrorism. And ironically, that last bit actually applies perfectly to Trudeau. So in reality, the Emergencies Act needs to be invoked to get that motherfucker out of here, bro. That's the real motherfucking emergency. And that's exactly why Trudeau has to call them Nazis, because that's the only way he's going to get away with this. Hitler and Nazi comparisons are cringe at this point, but I'll tell you why it's actually valid in this case. We know from history that this is how atrocities happen. You divide society into Group A and Group B. You teach Group A that Group B is the enemy by misrepresenting and antagonizing them. And as a result, your police force will comply when you ask them to do horrible shit to Group B. Then in the aftermath, they'll say they were just following orders. Make no mistake, when you continually allow a government to operate unchecked, it will devolve into a tyrannical state. It's never impossible and you would be foolish to think otherwise and that's exactly why the Second Amendment exists. Look at Australia, a once British democratic colony just like Canada. Australia's people allowed the government to operate unchecked. And as a result, the government instated curfews. They deployed drones to patrol the streets. <laughs> will be used at parks and other places where people congregate. Thank you. Your actions are saving lives. They arrested people for not wearing masks in outdoor settings like parks and beaches. They gave police access to people's GPS location on their phone to make sure they were quarantining. And they couldn't even leave their degenerating country without jumping through hoops to get consent from their government. Now you need to get a serious amount of paperwork, apply for a uh, exemption, so ask the government if you're allowed to leave. First time I tried to do that, I got rejected and I had to uh, apply again with even more paperwork, I then actually managed to get approved to leave the country. Do you honestly think the Australian people voted to make themselves prisoners? They allowed their government to operate unchecked and their government turned them into prisoners under the guise of public safety. And when we see the same thing start to happen here, in the land of the free, a revolution isn't justified. It's absolutely necessary understand how it gets to the point well, where think, things get to terrible places one tiny step at a time if i encroach on you and i'm sophisticated about it i'm going to encroach two millimeters i'm going to encroach right to the point where you start to protest then i'm going to stop then i'm going to wait then you're going to calm down then i'm going to encroach again right to the point where you protest then i'm going to stop then i'm going to wait and i'm just going to do that forever and before you know it, you're going to be back three miles from where you started, and you'll have done it one step at a time. And then you'll go, oh, how'd I get here? And the answer was, well, I pushed you a little farther than you should have gone, and you agreed. And so then I pushed you a little farther than you should have gone again, and you agreed. The way of the leaf against the way of the light. Even if you crush it, bury it, burn it, 
becomes part of the earth and the air.